Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In my previous videos, I used the CNC3018 Pro to make some aluminum 3D printer parts. As many of you are interested in how I upgraded this $149 CNC to cut aluminum, I am going to make a series of videos to show you everything, including the hardware upgrades, firmware configuration, using Fusion 360 CAD for 3D modeling, and using Fusion 360 CAM to generate G-code for the CNC. If you are familiar with 3D printing, you can tell this is very similar to a 3D printer. In fact, a 3D printer is also a CNC machine, since CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. So, any machine that uses computer programs to control the movements is a CNC. The number 3018 is used to describe the working area of the X and Y axes. As you can see, the bed of this machine is 300 by 180 millimeters. If a machine is called CNC 6040, that means the bed size is 600 by 400 millimeters. There are also some larger formats, like 6090 and 2 feet by 2 feet, 4 feet by 4 feet, and so on. The working area of a CNC machine is not only limited by the bed size, but also the height of the gantry. For this 3018, the Z height can travel around 40 millimeters. That means you cannot work with anything that is thicker than 40 millimeters. In fact, the actual working height is even less than 40 millimeters, as you still need to subtract the length of the collet and the tool. I bought this machine because it's very affordable, but my purpose is to make aluminum parts, so I have to make a few upgrades. The most important upgrade is a more powerful spindle. The spindle that came with this machine is just 80 watts. It was powered by the DC 24 volt power supply through the main board. If I want a more powerful spindle, I have three options. The first option is to install a wood router. A Makita one and a quarter horsepower router costs around $80. It's quite powerful compared to the stock one, but like all other wood routers, they are super noisy and it's a bit too large for this 3018. The second option is to install a VFD, which stands for Variable Frequency Drive. This device can convert single phase power to three phases and can handle much more powerful spindles, but it's kind of expensive. A VFD with a 1.5 or 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle costs around $200 to $300. If I want anything more than 2.2 kilowatts, I may have to add a 220 volt socket to run it. This is obviously not a good option for the CNC 3018, as the frame isn't very rigid. I don't think a slightly pricey VFD and a high power spindle would be a good match for this cheap CNC. So, the last option is to get a DC 110 volt power supply to run a slightly more powerful spindle. The maximum power spindle supported by an 110 DC power supply is 800 watts. The whole set only costs around $100, but it has to run at 20,000 RPM to maintain the high torque. The problem is it can heat up the aluminum quickly, and I would have to spend extra money for a coolant system. For dry cutting, if I slow it down to around 10,000 RPM, it would work just like a 500 watt spindle. So I chose a set including a 500 watt spindle, a DC 110 volt power supply, and a mount, which cost around $70. To upgrade the spindle, I have to print a spindle carriage to replace the stock one. You can find 3D models from Thingiverse. I tried to print it with PLA, but when the spindle got hot and the temperature reached around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, the PLA deformed. So I reprinted using ASA and it works much better. You can also use some M6 T-nuts and press them at the back of the 3D printed carriage so the motor holder can mount on them. As the new carriage is taller, you also need two 45mm LMA LUU bearings. A pack of four will cost $10. You also need some longer screws since the screws that came with the spindle set are not long enough. 
I also bought some M6 by 80 millimeter screws, which cost less than $10 for a pack of 10. The stock stepper motor for the Z axis is the same as the ones on an Ender 3. This NEMA 1734 millimeters can't provide enough torque to move the one kilogram 500 watt spindle up and down accurately. I replaced it with a NEMA 1748 millimeter that costs $13 which provides almost 50% more torque. As the height of the motor shaft is also longer, I have to buy some 35 mm spacers to fit it. The final part we need to print is a fan on the spindle. The one that came with the spindle does not work very well. It's noisy and creates extra vibration. But the main reason I need to replace it is because the height of the stepper motor has increased and the spindle fan is actually scratching it. The installation is pretty straightforward. Just gently knock off the linear motion rods on the Z-axis, remove the old stepper motor, and slide out the old carriage. Reuse the lead screws, T-nut, and the spring on the new 3D printed carriage. Attach the new carriage and knock the linear rods down to the bottom gently to prevent damage to the bearings. If the steel balls fall out, it's very difficult to put them back. Then, attach the new stepper motor with the longer 35mm spacers to the Z-axis. Tighten the coupler to lock the lead screws and use the four screws to secure the stepper motor. The space for inserting the two screws at the back is a little bit tight, so using a clamp may help. Move the new carriage by turning the coupler and make sure the motion is smooth. Next, we can mount the spindle holder on the carriage, but don't tighten it all the way yet, as we still need to put the new spindle on. Now we can tighten it completely. Next, we will take a look at the wiring part. Since the wires on the spindle are short, I have to extend the wires using some 16 gauge wires to extend it to the power supply. Let's take a look at the wiring. The power supply doesn't come with the power cord, but you can get a new one for a few dollars. I just cut an unused power cord from an old desktop computer. Connect the hot wire on the left and neutral on the right. Since there is no ground connector, I will just connect it to the metal case with a screw. For the motor cable, the red is on the left and the black is on the right. There is also no power switch on the power supply. I used an emergency stop button with the relay to control the on and off. I connected one cable from the stop button to one of the on-off connectors of the power supply, and I connected the second one to the relay. Then, connect the relay to the stop button so the button and the relay have to be on at the same time to power up the spindle. In order to control the relay, I will connect it back to the mainboard's original spindle connector, which will turn on the 24 volt power once it receives the M3 command from the G-code. Finally, connect the new C stepper motor to the Z motor connector on the mainboard. Now when I send an M3 command, it will trigger the onboard 24 volt spindle connector. As it has been connected to the relay, it will turn on the spindle. When I send the M5 command, it will cut off the onboard 24 volt power, so the relay will stop the spindle. Since we also have a stop button, when the spindle is on, we can also use the button to stop it, or use the button to turn it back on, and stop it using the M5 G code. I also connected two emergency buttons, one for everything and one just for the spindle. So if I press this button, only the spindle will turn off. If I press the machine stop button, the main power of the machine will be off. As the relay is no longer powered, the spindle will also turn off. You may wonder why I need two emergency buttons, since using one for everything should be good enough. The reason is that if something goes wrong during an operation, if there's only one button, I have to cut off the power and the machine will reset. I have to probe the stock again and find the origin manually, and it may not be easy to go back to the exact same position with the accuracy of this kind of cheap machine. Instead, I can just stop the spindle, pause the program, and keep the power of the mainboard, 
so that x, y, and z positions will not be reset. I can just adjust the z height and continue the operation without resetting the machine. I will explain more about this in future videos when we start making some parts. For controlling the spindle speed, I will just use the knob that came with the power supply to control the speed manually. Most of the time, it has to be running at maximum speed to provide enough torque to cut aluminum. Finally, I would suggest adding an enclosure. This simple enclosure was made by 20 by 20 aluminum extrusions, laminated MDF, and an acrylic sheet which cost around $70. I need this enclosure because this machine is quite noisy when cutting aluminum, and I don't want the aluminum dust to fly everywhere. To make it more user-friendly, I will show you how to add limit switches on the X, Y, and Z axes. I will also add a probe sensor in the next video, so the machine knows the exact location of the stock you need to cut and deliver more accurate results. All the hardware, software, and 3D model links I used in this video are in the description below. I hope you found this helpful. I will now show you some footage of cutting aluminum using the 500 watt spindle, so you can see what you can get from this upgrade or compare it to your stock 3018 and see if this upgrade is worth it. That's it for this video. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.